we will see, um, you know, because Penn State coaches like this sometimes. They coach their rotations based on how they think the game will play out. And usually it's fine. Like, usually you get some of those guys in there that, you know, it's like, uh, oh, Tamir Robinson's all of a sudden has got 27 reps. And, uh, you know, you've got those younger guys that are stepping into those spots. Dejan, which game was was Dejan Lane, Kent State, when he played a ton? Like, I think he led the safeties and snaps. Like, those, those little things are coached into the game plan. And they usually work. I mean, it spreads yeah. out over time, but uh, I think that that's what you see on Saturday. That's that's the opportunity that's at hand, at least. That would be the way that Penn State Penn State coaches the game as if this was a, an opportunity to uh, get ready for Minnesota or the next game or whatever. If they and, and this is maybe this is something that they are doing anyway. From are they running specific plays to beat Purdue, or are they running plays that they want to work, irrespective of the opponent going forward? You know, are they? using this as a warm-up week to go on the road to Minnesota that plays a different style of defense and they just feel like everything can work about against this team. So they're not going to specifically hyper target the game plan here. There, there's an avenue for this not being the expectation. Last thing here, and I want to bring this up because this is funny because it's in the chat, and it's because it's something I thought about. Abdul Carter, four <sighs> sacks and 11 pressures in the last two games. He's finally having his breakout season, uh, part of the season. Uh, is this, does this, does he continue that Ryan does, is Abdul Carter a big part of this game for you, uh, in terms of, of course. the final score final until they play Max score. Granville <laughs> until they play Max <laughs> Granville later in the game, of course, but absolutely, man. I mean, this is his opportunity to, to again, run it up, uh, you know, keep those, keep those, uh, awards alive and obviously keep building your draft stock. But yeah, of course, Abdul yeah. Carter should be a beast. Kobe, Kobe King should be a beast. Jalen Reed should be a beast. Um. Yeah. I, why, why wouldn't they? The producer yeah. thinks. To, the question to me is who wins the Shaka Tony Memorial uh, Game in Indiana Award this week? Yeah. With uh, all of a How sudden he's got three sacks. That? What's that? How many sacks did he have? He had three game? against Purdue, and he had a ton against Indiana as well. So, like in the state of Indiana, he was the most yeah. dominant pass rusher we've ever seen. Gotcha. So that's that's kind of where I'm thinking. But you know, maybe maybe that's Granville, maybe that's Harvey. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll see what happens uh, there. Penn State should have an opportunity to to dictate with the line of scrimmage. Uh, Purdue yep. is uh, is what it is there. I, I don't I don't have an in depth scouting report besides saying they can't it, run up the middle. Like they, they physically cannot run between the tackles. So their game plan is to run out wide, which is why I bring up Abdul Carter, because if you're going to run laterally, Abdul Carter can chase that stuff down, which to me is why I brought him up, why he's the thumbnail, because he could have a very early impact if they try to run laterally on this defense. But any of these players could any slot corner, any linebacker can chase stuff down in the flat. But Abdul Carter has been excellent against the run this year in being disruptive in the backfield. And going back to our conversation earlier, Christian just made a point um, about the game NCAA 25 always playing Tysir Denmark. Well, Tysir Denmark's like able to play now. Like he's going to, uh, I think he's still at one game, um, could be at two. I actually should have fact checked that before I go in, but like he's one of those guys that you can sprinkle in there and maybe, maybe see what you got. Um, I, we've been talking all year about how he still has work to do physically, he still has work to do mentally. Um, sometimes you just drop him in the game and, and, and good things will happen. So, with extended reps, um, potentially there for uh, for Denmark over the next couple of weeks, I'm I, I mean, that's one of the guys I'm excited to see. Like, it's not really, uh, I'm not expecting him to change the uh, the passing attack or anything like that, but at the same time be fun to watch. So yeah, um, yeah. that's kind of where I'm at with, uh, with him and uh, Penn State it's has changed of, their stat page. So great. Can, I, yeah. Uh, 17 snaps week four is the only thing that I have here from uh, his participation on offense, defense, or special teams. And I just want to characterize, I said this the other day uh, about Tysier Denmark. I think we've, we've tried to pump the brakes on everyone for trying to find the savior for the receiver room. It's not that we aren't excited to see him just like you, but we just don't expect the world of him and expect him to do more than uh, maybe the staff expects of Tysier Denmark. Right. Let's get right. into our game predictions here and close out the show with what we expect. And again, this is one of those situations where we all expect Penn State to win, but it's the how much, blah, 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 the, those sort of things. So, Ryan, take us away. What do you expect from Penn State in this game? 42 to 7. Not even sure why uh, I gave them 7 because I think they've only had 6 points in their last like, 3 games or something like that. But to me, it's easy stats here. Uh, Purdue is 85th in rushing success rate defensively. They are 129th in passing success rate defensively. Penn State's top 10 in both of those categories. There's no reason they shouldn't be able to have a lot of success early in this game, get up four or five touchdowns, and and be able to rotate some guys in the second half. But, uh, you know, the one thing I'll come back to, again, I'll keep stressing it, 
last week, uh, Ohio State, 45-0. Uh, Texas over, over Florida, 49-17. Notre Dame over Florida State, 52-3. I think style points are going to matter down the stretch here. And, and you know, Penn, hey, give Penn State credit. 35-6 over Washington is, is, is in, in my eyes, a good style point as well. Um, but this is an opportunity to run it up. I mean, you still have that one that one score win over Bowling Green. You have that tight win over USC, which USC doesn't look very good right now. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think getting style points down the stretch here only builds – uh, the, the confidence of the, of the committee of saying, hey, look, you know, they're playing some of their best football right now. We got to keep them in that six seed or so, because, again, it, obviously there's a lot that has to play out. But, you know, playing in the ACC, uh, you know, champion in, as a six seed or I don't think they'll get the fifth, but six in my eyes is probably their best. That's a lot better than having to play the, the Big Ten champion or the SEC champion in that, in that next round. Fitz, give me your best. What do we got here? I got Penn State uh, winning big as well, 45 to six. Um, you know, we'll see um, what, how the defense allows uh, those points. But, uh, you know, I just think there's a big gap here. And uh, like I said, unfortunately for Ryan Walters, it's, it's not going to work out for them. Um, you look at the schedule this year and the comparable opponents lost to Notre Dame early in the season, 66 to seven. That's a big one. Wisconsin, not a comparable opponent, but 52 to six. Now that was at Camp Randall. That changes some things. Oregon 35 to nothing. So you look at the style there that Purdue is not great at running the football, but they're going to want to string this one out as long as possible. That's kind of what they did against Oregon. Then last week, 45 nothing against Ohio State. The funny thing here is they went to overtime with Illinois and lost 50 to 49 in a game that doesn't look like it is the most out of place score yeah. on any schedule I think I've ever seen. Like, T. Frank, I, I don't know if you've delved into this one. I started um, watching it, yeah. But it's just like, okay, well, you see some potential. Because Illinois, not a bad team. Not, I don't think a great team. But in that middle tier in the Big Ten that we talked about earlier. Yep. But 50 to 49, how's that happen? Well, uh, they are intimately familiar with each other from the stylistic perspective. And I think that just I, I barely got into it the other day because I was sitting outside of the Lash building watching film. I wasn't exactly like in my studio. Um the Illinois offensive line not being strong physically and as a unit overall was part of the problem where they're running laterally on this defense and they were able to chase some stuff down. They weren't able to like string together some some of these things. But at the same time, uh, Luke Altmeyer should have scored a touchdown early in the game because they had a they had a slot receiver uh, covered by a linebacker in a cover three situation that I just physically broke my brain. I didn't understand what the defense rotation was doing. It made no sense. So you had a receiver running wide open down the middle of the field. So th this is what I'm talking about. When 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 you're looking at this team, you see like, okay, they don't have the talent to run this, and they're making mistakes. So when I when I say that Penn State should win 49 to nothing, and I said on the message board, I put this in the Kent State bucket. I'm not saying that their talent level is that level. I'm saying that Penn State's domination level should equal the same feel of game because this particular situation does not constitute. Um, them stringing this out. There are multiple ways for Penn State to win offensively, multiple ways for Penn State to win defensively. And if that doesn't happen, it's because Penn State did something wrong. Um, yeah. and, hope and that one, wasn't one, too harsh. One more thing here. Ohio State had 10 drives last week against Purdue. Like this is a situation where Purdue wants to like, and, and I think Ohio State played into this as well to sort of get in, get out, get on with it. Um, but they punted on their first drive, which remember that on Saturday, they punted on their first drive and then it was three straight touchdowns and then it's halftime. So you think about what Penn state did last weekend against Washington, only four drives in the first half, but you get four touchdowns. It sort of makes it, you know, it, it, it dresses it up a little bit. So you're looking at a low possession type game. And if Penn state uh, can hit some big plays, maybe that changes, um, sort of how we viewed the U I think it was the UCLA game T Frank. Um, like that was kind of what we're, what we're looking at here. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I said 45 points. Um, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a game tempo, uh, that ends like mid forties, but it feels like fifties, if that makes sense. 